You're still watching Prime Morning. Like we promised you earlier that the man will be here. He is seated right here. I'm talking about a young man who God is using to raise and empower the youth. Talking about empowering them, he's not just empowering them. He's empowering them spiritually and physically as well. Now, he, he preaches the word to them and he also empowers them to make sure that when you grow up, you will become somebody that you always wished and dreamt of becoming. He's here. His name is Pastor Brian Amwati. Good morning, Pastor Brian. Good morning. How Pastor. are you today? I'm doing very well. Great. And uh, finally, we get to have an interview. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, I know been, right? it's, been, it's been ages. It's been, I know. Yes. Right? yes. And welcome. You don't live in Ghana, Thank so. Thank you. Yes. Um, but it's, it's just always joy to be here in Ghana and, of course, to come for IS. Mm. Yes. IS has been in existence for a while now. Yes. Mm. How many years now? Nine years. Nine years. Now, let's talk about, you know, it, it, in your profile, we saw that you're an entrepreneur. Yes. Entrepreneur as a pastor. Um, of course, um, I think I've been so passionate about doing business since I was a child. And I just thought it was that um, I, I, I can't just only be a pastor. I just got to do something. I can't rely only on church offerings. So it's something that I've been doing over the years. And God has been so good. Mm. Now, being yes. an entrepreneur, do you think the youth of today have the same entrepreneurial spirit? Yes. Um, now, I think people don't have the right information because the right information that you get will determine what you do. You can get a, that spirit in you, but unless someone speaks to you for you to realize that you have it in you, you will not get it. That's why, of course, this platform is created so that all the youth can know what they have and catch the right spirit. Mm. And you've been doing IS for a while now. And yes. of, of course, some of us have been uh, there. We've witnessed it. That's right. We've seen great people mount the platform to so yes. inspire the young ones. Yeah. Have you had the young ones come out, you know, after a certain number of years to say, I came for IS we, and I am who we, I am today because of IS? We have countless number of testimonies. There's this testimony that I always share. I was, I was at, at the airport one day and a young man walked to me. And all what the guy told me was, thank you, Pastor Brian. I said, what is it? He said he came for IS at 2017 at the National Theater. He had just one line that changed his entire life. He has two companies in Dubai now doing so well. And the interesting thing is that he has been supporting IS since 2018. So as for the testimonies, mind-blowing testimonies, we have people that came and they have written like 10 books. They never knew that they had the talent, they had it in them. So as for testimonies, countless number of testimonies. What made you start this youth empowerment ministry? I've been so passionate about young people all my life. I started preaching when, when I got born again. I started preaching, um, I, I had to go to the SHS school. So I've been so passionate How about young people. How old were you when people. you started preaching? Um, it's, it's been over 13 years now, of course, yes. But so I've been so passionate about young people and I think that being a youth is the foundation of your life. So it's better to invest in a foundation of a building. Do you know why? You can never correct a foundation. If a building is built, you can't go back to the foundations. So I thought it was that every young person, I'm going to dedicate my time and my life for that young person. Mm. Yes. So you've been doing this. Yes. But, you know, as, as you thought, you thought, you thought, somebody will say, God revealed to me. Did you mm. have that as well? Um... I think I, I just have to be honest. I didn't hear from God that, okay, go and do this. The passion was there. And of course, God gave me the passion. So I had to follow the passion. And anything that you're passionate about with hard work, you can get results. Mm. So when people come for IS, what are they to expect or what do they get impacted with? I keep telling people that to talk about what you expect at IS, I can't say much. It's something you, can, you should come and experience. And we have created the platform not solely to be spiritual. So as you know, morning sessions are for the empowerment sessions. Financially, we come people to take on finances. And even now, what I'm doing it's, I really want us to talk about health. Right. Young people are dying because they don't take care of their health. So we have different segments, people that, would want, that want to go into politics, entertainment, all facets of life. And we have reserved the evening service 
searching solely for the spiritual upliftment. That's when the church aspect is in. And this year, there's a whole twist to the event. There's going to be the first ever IS job fair. Mm. So that is the Wednesday morning, uh, that is at 9 a.m. Because I realized that, Rosalind, we can't just be talking like that. Okay, but somebody needs the opportunity. They can't even go to a company. So what I and my team and the board decided was that, okay, we are going to bring the companies to the grounds. So anybody that needs a job, come there prepared. Come with your CVs. We have different companies coming. So, and who knows, something can happen. And we have study abroad sessions. A lot of people... Talking about companies, are we talking about corporate companies or is diverse companies? Diverse companies. There? Corporate companies are coming and we are going to have skills training. Okay. Because a lot of people, I, I keep saying this, a lot of people, everybody wants to sit in the office. Mm. Nobody wants to be a bum. Now, that brings me to this question, where yes. people, some people are of the opinion that the youth of today are lazy. They want quick money. Mm. They are being influenced by social media. They mm. see the flashy cars. Yes. They see the designers. The pastors are wearing designer clothes and <laughs> all. And so, you know, they are looking for quick money. Yes. What do you think about that? There's an iota of truth in it. We don't take our time. I keep telling people that walk through the process Life is a process. You can't just jump from one and go to four. There's an iota of truth about it. But number two, they are failing to recognize opportunities. I keep telling people that I was, I was in my house in London and I had to do some um, renovations in my house. A guy came to paint my house and the amount he was charged, he was a painter, painter. So I started having a conversation with him and this guy is a millionaire from painting. But Ghana, if you tell a young graduate that go and learn painting, oh no, I want to sit in the office and get my tie on. So that's why with this job fair, we, are, we have also created an opportunity for skills training, even beats training. See the wonderful beats on you right now. If you travel to London right now, do you know the amount of money you will make from this? So the platform is there. Barbers, um, makeup, artistry. It's an opportunity that you don't want to miss. But so, people are also of the opinion that yes. these trades don't really pay in Ghana. Like you said, if I go abroad, I'll make the money with this particular mm -hmm. trade. But mm -hmm. in, in Ghana, I might not make the money. Some people have made it. I guess we bring people that have made it to teach you how to make People have made it. They are in the same Ghana that you are. How come? Perspective. Yes. So it's up to how you will market you see, yourself. That's right. Right. And that's do you right. teach marketing there as well? We IS, we teach IS is a whole package. We teach everything. Mm. That's why we have different speakers from politicians, entertainers, businessmen, pastors. Like you just Are you know. ever going to go into politics, Pastor Brian? No. Why? Um I haven't heard from God. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear from God, you will go into politics? Whatever God says is final. Mm. Yes. I'm asking this because what you're doing is more like, you know, a politician empowering the young I people. Know. And I maybe know. the young people feel that, you know, it's about time we have people like yourself occupy such positions so we can have a better God. No. God has not spoken to me. But once he speaks to me, I have to obey my master. Mm. Yes. Until then. I keep being a pastor. And a businessman. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, you do a lot, uh, not just, you know, with the pastoral work, yes. not just, uh, you know, you go out there and yes. you help the needy as yes. well. And let's yes. talk about how that started for you. Um, I think that was a trait that, of course, not only me, myself and my brothers, we got it from our dad and mom. We saw how they can give their little to people that are in need. So I think it was birthed with us. So we've been doing this, we take care of the widows and we paid like every January, we paid no less than 50 hospital bills for people that are locked up in hospitals that cannot pay. And of course the IS Foundation have placed a lot of students scholarships in school. So it's something that was bred out from our parents. Mm. Yes. I'm talking about that. You know, I asked you this question because some people, yeah. again, yeah. I always say with regards to what some people's opinion is, That's you right. know, you look flashy on social media. You're a pastor. And yes. uh, I know you... What's your 
definition for flashy. The flashy. We see you wearing the designer. It's really? not every every ordinary person that can afford a designer shoe. Okay. Uh, can afford a designer watch. Can yep. afford a designer clothes. So yep. obviously, yep. it's a flashy life. Yep. Okay. And but you are going the length and breadth to make sure you put smiles on the faces of people. That's right. But you don't. You hardly let yep. people know that you are doing this. Why? Um, it's a choice. Like life. You choose to let people see what they want to see. So there are, there, there are other stuff that I just feel it's just a feeling. So like because nobody controls what I do, it's just a feeling. If I want them to see, I'll let them see. But there are, there are deep, deep stuff that, example, I go to churches and I'm ministering to people. And I know that this one does not need prayers. The person needs money. Sometimes I can just gather money. Or I can just tell the pastor, can you let this woman see me I have in the seen office? You do it. Yes, a lot. But you don't put it out. Countless, there. countless number of times. But um, it's just, as I said, it's a choice. I can just tell the pastor, can you let this woman see me at the office? And sometimes I can give the woman like six months, money that can keep her for six months. It's just a choice. Mm. Yes. Four brothers, all pastors, how did it happen? Only my dad can answer it. <laughs> 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 Haven't you asked him? Um, I think I have, but I'm the last born, mm. right? So I think only my dad can answer this question. I, I, I met him recently, and I, I went to the U.S., and I, I asked him about it, and he, like, he would just laugh over it. But I think he started investing in us early with the things of God. Mm. Yes. Who got the gift first? It's in the family. Is your father a pastor? My dad is not a pastor. But he's a preacher. He's okay. a man of God. Okay. What people don't know is that my dad is a Catholic. Mm. He's a staunch Catholic. They started a charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church. So, yes. And then uh, the sons are sons. not Catholic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they started their own. Why didn't you go into, you know, being a Catholic priest, a Roman father? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no way. I wanted to marry. Right. Yes. Mm. I've been married for 13 years, by the way. Okay. Yes. So, mm. yes, I wanted to marry. That's why you didn't. I didn't want to be a Catholic priest. So, when you gentlemen decided to leave the Catholic Church, what did your, ma your father say about it? Um, I think he saw a calling. And you know, the Catholic Church does not really embrace the prophetic. So, he just decided that if this is... This is what my kids want. We should just allow them. Mm. Yes. So all four of you have the prophetic gift? For including my sister. Oh, your sister has a prophetic gift too? Yes. Wow. Yes. What about your parents? Either pro of them? Yes. All of them. It's, it's in the family. So if you ask me how it came about, I don't know. I was just born and of course I got born again and we just started coming. Mm. Yes. So four of you, again, I have to ask this question because everywhere yes. I go and yes. I tell people I know you, yes. the question comes. And I tell them, when I get the opportunity on air, they will tell you <laughs> how they got it. <laughs> Who started prophesying first? There's Samson, uh, there's Daniel, there's Mac, and there's you. Okay, so you, I'm, I'm the last born. Yes. So it will be a bit difficult to answer this question. But I think the one that started prophesying first was Prophet Daniel. Right. Yes. Like, Prophet Daniel was, of course, I, I, I came up to Prophet Daniel mm -hmm. so I could see something like that. Mm -hmm. And of course, everyone's there. But I think the the main prophet was Prophet was Daniel. Prophet Daniel. That's right. Then, you know, who, who, who next? Uh, prophet Samson? Um, Samson? Prophet Samson, Samson. Dr. Mark, and myself. And okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's how it trickled down. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. Okay. I'm, I was the last born. My dad can answer that. But when did you start prophesying? How old were you? Um, I've been in this for so, so many No, when many did you start years. prophesying? Meaning? Age. Maybe you were in GSS. You were, you know, in secondary school. No, you were. I could see things. I go to my dad. I see it. It said, this is the meaning. Mm. So my dad was mentoring us. I went to SSS. I got in, involved with bad friends. So I, I swayed a little. Okay. But I was, I came back on track after SSS. So I, 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 I think that it's been there since bad friends. childhood. Yes. What were the bad things? Peer pressure. Like what? To do a lot of things apart from killing people. So you were smoking? 
A little. Taking alcohol? A little. So how did God decide to arrest you? How did it happen? It, it, I, th I think, you know what, because it was in the family, I was living a double life. I used to play the drums in church. M most of the people that know me, I used to play the drums in church. But I was in church, but I was not doing the things that I, I was supposed to do. Mm. So I, I was just arrested. I was on my way to a nightclub. And the, um, the taxi driver was playing a song. I'll never forget it. It was from one Madison Labby, the late Madison Labby. Why are you crying at me? Now, would told me, say, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I started tearing in the taxi. But guess what? I still went to the club. I was addicted to it. But I came back and I said, no, I was missing something. And that was Jesus. Mm. That was how I started. Jesus always has a way of touching us. That's right. Okay. Now, we talk about the young ones. I want to link your story to the young ones yeah. who feel all hope is lost That's because right. I'm addicted to this and I yeah. can't come out of it. Yeah. What would you have to tell them? Number one, find someone and talk to. I get lots of messages. Oh, my goodness. I know by the time I, get, I, get, I check my Instagram, there'll be a message there. People have been addicted to something, been addicted to smoking, masturbation, and a whole lot. Speak to God to help you, but find someone, mm. a trusted person. Nowadays, it's very difficult to find someone you can trust. You can even go to your pastor to talk to your pastor, and by the time you realize he's preaching with it on the pulpit, find someone you can trust and talk to the person and follow whatever thing the person tells you. And, number, and lastly, surround yourself with the right people. It comes with association. Mm. Yes. Cutting out the bad nut and going in for the good nut. And I, yeah. What you are saying exactly is what I think that everyone out there has to hear. What he's saying is that as much as possible, if you feel you're addicted to something and you want to get out of it, first of all, talk to God. Then find a very trustworthy person. Speak to that person because that person could help you. Now, talking about that, IS is just around the corner. Yes. What date are we having IS? IS is next week, Wednesday, 15th to 17th of March. It's a three-day event. Morning session starts exactly at 9 a.m. And by 1, we're done. And we come back for the evening session through to Friday. And, of course, the Friday night is the National Youth All Night. And that's the first ever of its kind in Ghana. We started last year with Reverend Studanaba. And this year, we're so privileged to have all the way coming from Congo, Apostle Leopold Motombo, an outstanding man of God. I'm telling you, I went to his church in Kinshasa. I was blown away. Over 85,000 people. How do you get these people? I don't know. Just by favor. I don't know. Mm. I, I, I have no idea. 85,000 people and the testimonies, the miracles that was happening, you have no idea. So this man coming all the way from Congo, Kinshasa, mm -hmm. and of course, Dr. Pauline Nenche, wonderful man How from Nigeria. How did you get him? It's, it's another story because I, we need to know how did you, this is a man who I, has the biggest church in Africa. Yes, and um, I don't know, I, I think it's favor. He walked into the building last year, he came to speak last year, and right after we let all what he told me was that God is with you and I'm coming back. I don't know how it happened. Wow. And truly, he's coming back. And of course, Reverend is to it, Anaba, Dr. Frank of Ofusuapia, please. Mm. Don't stay home. You can't miss it. Let's talk about the speakers. Yes. So we have Dr. Yao Osei Educhum. Minister for Education. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's speaking to the youth. He's speaking, does it. Now we have Dr. Ernest Ofori Sapong as well. Yes. A lot of people see Dr. Ernest, see of flashy cars. How did he make it? And a young person wants to start driving a G Wagon, wants to start driving a Rolls Royce because Dr. Ernest is driving it. How did it start? Come and listen to him. Mm. Yes, at IS. Now, the man of the moment, who is a popular man, everybody talks about him, Dr. George Akufo-Dampari. Yes. He doesn't I, speak in public. How did you get him? I decided to go for this man because he has changed the narrative, the face of police in Ghana. He has done very well, and I said I, I wanted him. Something happened. Let me say it in one minute. Okay. I was, I was with my driver, and you know we had to use some, I think a hard shoulder, and we got arrested. I made every call. Like I told them, I'm going for an appointment. 
They said, no, it's a directive from the IGP. They took us to court. We, we, we had to pay the fine. I sat down and I realized that, you know what? You can't do this in London. So who is this man who is changing the narrative and the perception about police? I went to him and he said, Pastor, I'm coming. Yes. That's fantastic. Dr. Elsie Effa Kaufman, you got here as well. Brilliant, national, uh, brilliant, <laughs> mass quiz. Like, NSMQ. So, so intelligent mm. woman. And a lot of women, young women, look up to this woman. So I wanted to bring this intelligent woman, yes. And uh, Joyce Bar Mutari. Yes, an astute politician, very influential woman, yes. And your brothers? Yes. Samson and Daniel. Prophet Samson and Prophet Daniel is coming. Mm. Listen, the, this year is a total package. It's a whole package. I don't know why you will stay home. Are we going to have your brothers preach? Last year, they didn't preach. They are going to speak. Okay. The, uh, this year, we have two speakers each night. Okay. Yes. That's fantastic. On Wednesday evening, myself, I'm speaking, and Reverend Istud Anaba starting. Okay. Yes. That's fantastic. So, uh, do we have to pay to be there? It's free. Completely free of charge. <laughs> So we, all we need to do is to find ourselves yes, show there. Up. That's show right. up. That's Thank right. you so much. So it's happening at the UPS UPS Auditorium. Auditorium. Yes. Please come. And we, we have people coming all the way from Kumasi, Suyane, Boase. There are free buses. When we close, we have buses that will take you wherever you want to go. Hmm. Yes. What does the future hold for IS? Because I know uh, most people call on IS. They say it's only in Accra and Kumasi. When are you spreading your wings? Um, okay. We have been to Kumasi very it was very massive during the COVID. And we went to the United States last year. This year, we are going back to Columbus, Ohio, 2nd and 3rd of June. And I, I want to take IS to at least five African countries. We are still in talk with some people in Nigeria. Fantastic. So he has a great future. Pastor Brian, I want to say congratulations on Thank that. You. And we definitely can't wait to be I a part of see it, But I want to say this. Thank you so much, Joy Prime. You're you guys welcome. have been listen. Joy Prima has been supporting IS for over five years, and I want to say thank you. You're most welcome. Okay. We are family. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, you want to say something finally before you go? Um, I just want to say I want to see everybody show up and be there. Thank, thank you, you so much. You okay. do have a fantastic day when you leave, but we know that IS definitely is going to be a great event. Don't forget that Dr. Paul Eneche is there, Dr. Frank Ofusuapia, uh, Reverend Eastwood Anaba, Apostle Leopold, uh, what's the surname again? Mutombo. Mutombo. Okay, Dr. Yao Oseye Duchum, who is the Minister of Education. We have Dr. Enes Oforisa Pong. We have Dr. George Kufudampari, who is the IGP. Dr. Elsie Efa Kaufman, uh, Joyce Bawa Mutari, uh, Samson Amwating, and Daniel Amwating. They'll all be present. I'll be present as well. KMJ will be present and we want to see you on Wednesday at the UPSA Auditorium. Let's meet there. Let's get impacted through IS. This has been the segment for Prime Morning, actually.